Okay, what is pair trading? Now, I used to know a guy who was very, very good and very, very successful at trading pairs. It's a good strategy and it can be one that is worth looking at specifically if you haven't really got time to sit there in front of the screens or perhaps you're not so good at picking market direction. But ultimately what you're doing with the pair trading is you're trading the relationship between two different assets. That could be stocks, that could be indices, could be ETFs, could be commodities. So I've got some examples here of how you might do a pair trade. So what you're doing with a pair trade is you're buying one and you're selling the other and you're not looking for one to go up and one to go down specifically, you're looking for the relationship between the two to vary. So if they both go down, as long as the one that you are short on goes down more than the one you're long on, you're gonna make money. And the same if they both go up, as long as the one that you're long on goes up further than the one you're short on, you're gonna make money. If they go up the same, you're gonna be neutral. So if they're going in waves like that, it's not gonna affect it. If one of them goes different, if, the, if obviously the best scenario is that you're long, uh, the one that you're long on rockets and the one you're short on tanks, obviously then you're gonna get that massive growth. Uh, so that's the idea of a pair trading strategy. It's the differential as opposed to the direction. A lot of hedge fund use this and a lot of prop traders use this kind of thing. So what can you do from a spread betting perspective? How can you pair trade? Well, the first and easy way kind of, of doing it, obviously trading is not, no, never easy, but a way of getting involved is, is to trade something like the European indices, like the FTSE against the DAX. You know, DAX against the CAC, CAC against the FTSE. So, you know, these guys here, um, you know, they're not ultimately correlated because they've got different constituents and different weightings. So you're never gonna get that pure correlation with something like this. However, generally speaking, um, throughout the years that this breaks from time to time, you know, that these will move in unison. So if it's a bullish day, you're gonna get bullish moves on the FTSE and the DAX and the CAC. If it's bearish, they're all gonna go in sync. Obviously, if it's something that's heavily weighted in the FTSE that affects it, that's when you're gonna get that differential. But that also can prevent an opportunity, uh, can, can uh, give you an opportunity. If there is a, a big move in one and not the other, maybe that's the time to get involved in the pair, assuming that they're gonna then come back to a median level. And we'll talk a little bit more about strategy in a second. So there's that. You can also go, also go something like FTSE against the Dow, or DAX against the Dow, um, NASDAQ, S&P 500. You know, you can relate all of these. You have to understand they're never correlated completely, but the idea is that looking for some sort of correlation and when it goes out of sync it's going to come back in that's when you make your profit so from a stock perspective there are just hundreds and hundreds of them so some ideas here you've got fedex versus ups for example obviously two very very similar stocks going to be affected by the same things you the assumption is that if one of them moves more aggressively than the other it's because of supply and demand as opposed to factors that are going to influence a longer term and ultimately it's going to come back into line that's what you're playing for lloyd's barclays the banks Something even a little bit broader like Mobileye and Tesla, kind of in that uh, car business, even though that Tesla's a car manufacturer, Mobileye is more uh, to do with the sensors and, and the things that go in the cars for autonomous driving. It's kind of down that new age, new technology thing. And a lot of things are going to be that impact one are going to impact the other. Uh, Tesco, Sainsbury's, UK supermarket, obviously Google, Yahoo, actually that's, it's changed it now to Alphabet, hasn't it? But that kind of thing, not quite, again, a little bit different, but this is where your edge comes in. So if you're looking at something that's so correlated, like Royal Dutch Shell A versus B, there's no opportunity to profit. But if they're kind of correlated, but have these swings, that's when you get the opportunity. So it's up to you to tailor the pair to suit your risk tolerance. And then something like obviously Glaxo, Pfizer, same kind of thing, pharmaceutical companies. So uh, what are the pros and cons of pair trading? Well, the pros are it's market neutral. You don't have to pick the market direction or your trading is the difference between the two. So that's quite a good thing to do. Less volatile, not always. I'm generalizing here with these, by the way, because sometimes they can go crazy. Uh, you have to just look back at the Volkswagen chart, for example. And if you're pair trading that against some of the other automakers, uh, you are gonna struggle. But generally speaking, less volatile, you know, you don't have those massive swings. If the market goes up 300 points, your pair is probably gonna, gonna oscillate a little bit. They're both gonna go up at the same time, and one will go up more than the other, so it dampens down the volatility. And your percentage hit rate is higher. It's, it's a high hit rate kind of trade because it's a mean reversion on a mean reverting asset, i.e. the pair, the ratio of the two. Uh, the hit rate of, the, of your trades is going to be higher. Now, the cons of this is that risk management is hard. If you can imagine that if you were plotting a ratio of, 
uh, let's say uh, Glaxo and Pfizer, you know, instead of having an individual price chart, you know, you're going to get something like this. It's going to move up, it's going to move down, it's going to sit in a range, and it's going to do this. And that's going to be what it looks like over the year, I'm guessing, but that's kind of what happens with pair trades. And what you do is you end up placing a, a sort of mean, if you like, whether you do that in a month or a week or a year, and you're shorting the pair, the ratio of the two, uh, when it gets high, and you're buying it when it gets low. Obviously, I'm oversimplifying it here, but that's kind of what you're doing. Now, the problem with risk management is that you know, you're know you trading a mean reversion strategy, looking for it to come back to your mean, whatever that may be. If this thing continues and continues, how do you deal with that? Because theoretically, that's a better trade, right? It's going further away from the mean, more juice in it, but you, know, the, you can get it stuck into a situation where you, know, you have to decide where you come out. Now, a very, very uh, wealthy pair trader that I knew who traded US stocks specifically would scale into this position. So he would add one, add another, add another, add another. But he had a very big bank roll and he could do that and he could sit through. And ultimately, even if it came back to here, he would still be okay because he's scaled in. Now, you've got to be careful with that because that is, you know, open-ended risk. And then when you're on the wrong end of one, you're going to get hammered. So, you know, from, from a spread betting perspective, you're probably better off kind of taking the, the trade and then having a, a cutout level where you get stopped out. Um, so even if it does go further, you ditch it and you and you reassess and look at something else. So that's got to be careful. You've got, it's not a traditional stopped kind of thing. You've got to look at your risk management a little bit deeper, a little bit closer. The other thing is high margin. Um, because you're trading two things and generally for trading stocks, a little bit higher margin, not so much with the indices, but with stocks a little bit higher. Because you're trading two things for one trade, you've got to put twice as much money up. And of course, you've got to double the commissions. So you know, you've got to buy one and sell one then and then cover the other then and then sell the other one. So you have got twice the amount of commissions. Now, generally speaking, if you're holding it for quite a couple of days or a couple of months or something, that's not going to bother you, and most of the spreads are pretty tight on these anyway. But it's something to bear in mind. You know, if you're using a day trading strategy, which some people do, you've got a higher commission rate. But at the end of the day, you know, if you find yourself an edge, you find yourself struggling to predict kind of direction, then maybe analysing, you know, a basket of stocks that are intercorrelated, creating those, putting those into a spreadsheet, or just putting them on a chart, or just marking them down, and using that as a strategy is kind of a little less volatile way of of of, move, of benefit of of profiting from market moves.